Pokemon Duel is out and it's new in the states, and while its hype may not be nearly as large as Pokemon Go's when it first released, it sure as heck is not going to kick you out of any battle just because your phone's GPS thinks that you're standing four blocks away from where you actually are. It's a lot of fun in that it's chess-like. It's simple to pick up, very hard to master. I'm just hitting the 1900 league matches right now. Um, it's approaching Master League, and I'm finding that the players who know what they're doing stand out very much against the players who at the lower tiers are kind of moving their pieces around randomly. Folks, this is the type of game where if you make a mistake, it can be exploited against you very often, very normally, to turn it into an instant loss against you. There are matches that can be done in three moves. There are matches that can be lost in two moves. There are matches that can be lost in 50 moves very interesting that way so I say it's very samurai like and that you don't want to make mistakes ever so I'm gonna be giving out a few tips that I think if I knew them three days ago when I first started things would be so much better off for me today um, and I've appreciated learning them. I'm just gonna share them with you guys right now first and foremost Everyone should know this. Explore all the game modes. I know that League Play button is big and fat and there right in front of you, but a lot of people don't even know that this game has a story mode or a training quest mode or daily quest. Daily quests are great for getting you gems and some other rewards. Training will get you some select rewards, some plates, some figures. It's how I got Poliwag, who's one of my favorite three movement point figures that I have. I'm still using him today. I got him from training. So make sure you try those out before you jump into league play so you're not missing out on any rewards that you would want to take with you to league play. And on that note, let's go straight into plates. Obviously you want to get some and obviously you want to get the ones that are working for you. There are so many combinations of plates in this game. I like the movement, specializing ones, but you can get bonuses and buffs and boosts like that. But make sure that you are bringing six points of plates with you in the match in the lower tiers I don't know why when I was first starting I saw so many people who were just bringing in three points worth of special moves and you can have six which meant they were bringing in half the special moves that they were taking that they could why would you do that to yourself so try some training missions or visit the shop if you gotta make sure you're bringing in all the special moves that you can getting into less obvious stuff now you want to try balancing different combinations of power and movement points I would argue that they're equally important this is the game where not all Pokemon are created alike. You can have like Mewtwo, you can have Scyther. Both will move two movement points. However, if you have nothing but Mon in your army that'll move two movement points, trust me, you're gonna miss out by not having some threes in there. Tactically wise, you could switch the game from defense to offense really quickly just by getting the right guy into the right position at the right time. So don't just bring in ones or twos. Definitely squeeze in some threes in there. Also, Regarding plates before, I should have said this before, make sure you're reading your opponents every single match, especially when you get to the higher tiers. When you get, especially when you get to the higher leagues, you will find that people are bringing in plates that just might surprise you. For example, Hurdle Jump is a great ability, and it just lets a figure jump over another figure. So if you aren't aware that your opponent has to, has this, and you're not aware that he could jump over your position, you think your goal is defended because there's a mon in front of it, you're not aware, you're leaving an opening that'll give him an instant victory once he's in position. So read the plates, you can find them out by clicking right over here, Read the plates. Also, on that note, keep the heat on. The heat is on. It's on the street. This is a game where you want to switch off from offense to defense. I much prefer to be on offense in this game. Don't let things sneak past you. Don't let one unit get past you and all of a sudden give an instant defeat. But sometimes if the pressure is getting built on you, what you can do is get a, an enemy pass, and if you can get like, I don't know, Poliwag into the corner and threatening their goal, what you have forced is now they have to respond to you in the next move or they'll lose. So if you can assure victory that way, establish a direct threat when they're about to threaten you, maybe you could change the game from defense into offense. So keep the heat on. Next up is for boosters, getting a good army yourself. Again, I haven't poured a single penny into this game. I've just been playing for a little bit and I'm finding that this is not a pay to win model. But if you get 300 gems on you, which you can get from daily quests, just from logging in bonuses, stuff like that, consider buying the six pence booster, the six pack. It comes with an extremely rare figurine each time, and this is how newer players can get a Mewtwo of day one of playing this game. Those extremely rare figures will diversify your army and make your options much more powerful and much more varied. They're fun. So, this is Pokemon Duel, guys. Like I said, I think it's exercising the same parts of your brain that chess would. It's less Nintendo battle mode like this and more 
think and have the right tactics like this. I'm liking that right now. I really appreciate it. This is the game that's fun to play for 10 minutes. It can even be fun to play for an hour. Um, Pokemon Duel, check it out. Hope this helps.